In this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate flow rate for your 3D printer using Cura. I'll explain what flow rate controls and why we might need to calibrate it. I'll also show you how to run a simple test print that we can measure to see if your flow rate even needs adjusting. To measure what we need to, you're going to need a set of vernier calipers. If you don't have any, I have links down in the description for ones that are suitable for measuring 3D printed parts. What is flow rate? Flow rate is a figure that represents the result of many calculations, but in basic terms, changing your flow rate will extrude more or less filament throughout an entire print. It's kind of like squeezing a toothpaste tube more or less. Why might we need to change flow rate? By default, flow rate is set to 100% and most people won't need to adjust it. However, if you suspect you have under or over extrusion after calibrating E-steps, then flow rate is the next place to look. Flow rate can also need changing for different filaments, nozzle sizes, and temperatures in some cases. If you haven't calibrated your E-steps, do this first. There are links below in the description to videos that will show you how to calibrate your E-steps. Flow rate is controlled within your slicer, so the first thing to do is to create a test print. Open Cura, and if you don't have it already, install the Calibration Shapes plugin from the Marketplace button at the top. It may take a while to get everything ready, but once it's downloaded all it needs, scroll down to find the Calibration Shapes plugin and install it. Click to Quick Cura so that the changes take place. After you've opened it again, click on the Extensions tab on the taskbar at the top and then move down to Part for Calibration. There are lots of options here, but I'm going to simply select Add a Cube. This will give you a 20mm cube on your build plate ready for slicing. Set your material and nozzle size and then open up the Print Settings menu at the side. What we're going to want to do is tell the slicer to not print a top on the cube or to print any infill. This will allow us to measure the thickness of the walls, which will tell us whether our flow rate is correct. To do this, we may need to change a setting or two that you might not have visible in the list. If this is the case, select the settings icon on one of the headers as shown, and you'll be presented with a list of all the possible settings that you can make visible. You only need to tick the box next to an option and then it will appear on the right. The quickest way to find a particular setting is to search for it at the top. While we're here, make sure you have the following options ticked. Line width, wall line count, top layers, and flow. Once you have all of these options in your menu, change top layers and infill density to zero. Set line width to the same as your nozzle size. I'm using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so my line width is 0.4 millimeters. I make sure flow is at 100%. Now we need to set wall line count. This is the number of walls we want to print. If we set this figure to one, then guess what? We only get one wall on our topless cube. You'll hear different opinions on whether you should use one wall or more in this test, but to start with, I'm gonna advise you start with one wall. I'll explain more later. Check your print temperature is correct for the filament you're using, and your print speed is what you're most likely to print with. For most, this will probably be 50 to 60 millimeters per second. Hit slice, and then after when you hit the preview tab, you should see a cube with only a bottom and four sides, each one only one line thick. Save this file to the SD card or USB stick you use for your printer and then print it. Once your print is complete, make sure it cools a little before you try and measure it. If the top layer is still hot, then your measurements could be off. Measure the thickness of the top few layers of each of the four walls and then take an average of them. If you don't know how to do this, you just add the four measurements together and then divide by four. Make a note of this number. If you set your line width to 0.4 millimeters like me, then you should get a measurement somewhere between 0.4 and 0.42 millimeters. If you do get a figure within this range, then I'd advise you to just leave your flow rate 100%. However, if your figure is much bigger, or definitely if it's smaller, then use the following calculation to calculate your new flow rate. I'll show you how to do this in a second, but first I just want to briefly explain why slightly too large is okay, but too small is definitely not. When a bead of filament is laid down, like toothpaste, it doesn't have nice square sides. Instead, it has more of an oval shape. When we're measuring only one wall, we're actually measuring the outside lobes of this oval. If our oval filament bead is exactly 0.4 millimeters and we put another one next to it, it's easy to see that there's not a lot of material touching the bead next to it. This means that there is very little adhesion between the beads. If, however, our bead is slightly over 0.4, say 0.42 millimeters, then when our beads are put next to each other, the filament is squashed together, creating a much stronger bond between the beads. The downside to this is a print that's very slightly oversized in the X and Y dimensions. Hopefully this also explains why anything under 0.4 millimeters means that the beads don't even touch, giving you a much weaker print. It's also the reason why there's debate as to whether it's better to use one wall or more for a flow test. My advice would be to start with a print with one wall, and then if it looks like you might need to change something, try a print with two walls or three walls to see if you get similar results. I found on one of my printers that for PET-G, I had slight over extrusion for one wall and under extrusion for two or more. In this case, increasing or reducing the flow rate would make one of those situations worse. 
In an ideal world, we'd have a way of moving those beads closer or further from each other to create the same adhesion without changing our flow rate. However, at the moment, I don't believe there's a way to do this. Please leave me a comment if you know a way to do this within Cura or another slicer. So back to the calculation. For one wall, multiply the line width you want by 100. For me, this is 0.4 times 100, which equals 40. Then simply divide this number by the number you wrote down earlier, which is the result of the average of all four walls. The result will give you a suggested new flow rate to try. As an example, if our print had walls that were only 0.39 millimeters thick, we would need to change the flow to 103%. And if the walls measured at 0.43 millimeters, we would change to 93% to get 0.4 millimeter walls. If you use more than one wall in your test print, then divide the wall thickness by the number of walls to get the thickness of each wall. Once you have your new flow rate figure, simply return to your slicer, change your flow rate and slice and print again. You should now find that your walls are the thickness you want. Just bear in mind that if you start getting gaps or any sign of under extrusion after reducing your flow rate, then you may want to consider increasing it a little again. Once you settle on a figure, then save it within a profile in Cura. I'll be doing a video on this soon, so hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. If you'd like to see another video about improving the quality of your 3D prints, then click here. Or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.